Yeah. No, Justin. <laughs> All right. And here we go. And this is Bird. It's the Kirk and Bird Show with our special guest today, Brentsville head coach, Lauren White. Thanks for joining us, Coach White. Oh, uh, no, I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, Coach, we really appreciate it. We know it's the thick of the season. Scrimmages. It's are... not the thick of the season. It's the start of the... It's the thick of two days. That's bro. what I meant. It's the, it's the, the end thick of... of the start. Thank you right. for correcting me. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. So, but we know you're getting into it, you know, installing packages and things like that. And uh, you'll have the opener coming up. Uh, just want to ask everybody out there uh, to subscribe to the Kirk and Berg show. It takes two or three seconds. means a lot to the show. And then uh, for the young guys that are a lot on Twitter, we don't Instagram. We got a page, but uh, we are at the Kirk and Bird uh, on Twitter. So, Coach White, you've got a really good playoff team returning. Um, as we were talking before on camera, um, division three is very good. Some great teams in it. Um, and, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about a team that did extremely well last year and based on talking to people, I know you have high hopes for this team, uh, this year. Uh, yeah, uh, last year, um, coming in, especially my first year, uh, coming in, uh, actually getting hired late, but just getting, in uh, a season worth, um, uh, kids were very receptive here, getting into the offense and defense to be able to have uh, two a days and uh, to start influencing uh, what I want the program to be and shaping it out. Uh, it turned out well uh, getting into that uh, first part of the schedule with the first four teams, our four A teams, uh, get in there coming out of that two and two, uh, and then uh, going through district play. And uh, we did a very successful district play, able to win out. So we uh, went out to the 3A district part of our. Uh, league there and then uh getting that experience with a lot of guys uh, on that group and just running making that run the playoff run uh then in like we won it but uh it definitely helped us grow from that point so hopefully now coming the season everybody having that experience uh, having a good amount of kids back and having ones that were still around during that time they much get that much playing time but be able to get that experience and then actually having a full off season with them under my um ahead uh, and see what I want to do for off season wise, getting bigger, stronger, uh, getting a lot more time out uh, for kids aspect and playing against uh, uh, other teams this season. Uh, so just looking forward to it now. Right. Coach, um, last year was your first year, like you said, um, but wasn't that the most successful season in Brentsville football history? Uh, I was. Uh, we ended up 11-3, which is the best record in football season history. So uh, this proved a lot for them coming in, having a mindset, um, going from that point, and it just paid off. So I uh, look to have the same expectations going into the next season, but we just take it one game at a time. Yeah, Coach, I mean, you, you guys uh, getting to the state semis and, 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 and playing against Phoebus, like a team that's won eight state championships and plays in the Peninsula District with a but with all I think they're all five. We don't have any six in there. You know, all division five in the regular season and, and won back when it was double single, double, triple A, you know, winning triple A state championships. Like for you to even be in that game and 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 have them, you know, to play that, that that can only help you for this year. Like getting there is amazing. But now your kids go, okay. All right, now you got an off season with them, um, and you see what certain kids are made of when you got that kind of pressure and athletes and stuff. Um, so tell me, Coach, when what do you see as? Can you tell us about some of your last year was your first year? Now you had a whole off season. Can you tell us about some of the returning players and and what you're looking for, what you can expect? Uh, yeah, just going in, just uh, expectation is high, especially from last year. Uh, like you say, again to play Phoebus team who. We know going in, we had a lot of athletes. I mean, every year, is there, there's no place you can go around that roster and not see an athlete. Uh, but just having the whole offseason, having that mindset in, uh, going in now, 
Uh, this is going back to returning for a lot of guys returning. Um, we did lose 16 guys, um, but we got a lot of the guys that were played before were underclassmen. So now it's their team to lead the team. That's a player led team from that point. Uh, the big one returning for us would be Tyler Nix, um, 6'3, 285, mm -hmm. offensive lineman, defensive lineman, mostly known for offensive line. Um, he was, uh, like a lot of people don't know, he's an um, offensive player of the year, not only for their district, but for the region too. For the region. So, wow. For the region. So, I mean, it's just, it's just shock alone for a person just to get it for a district or region, but at the same time being an offensive lineman, that's a lot of respect. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I'm thank I'm thankful I got a lot of head coaches in our uh, district region that are O line lovers. So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. And like, and pay respect to the big boy. But he also does it as you see it on film. You know, teams play as week to week, they get the exchange of film, they see it. That's the one person he, you know spots out like, hey, this guy's kicking people out of the club. And, you know, he earned respect from that way. Um, another one for us for coming back uh, would be uh, Ryan Beckman. He's a wide receiver. He's a senior for us, uh, number four. Uh, didn't get the ball a lot last year, same because we're so explosive with the run game, but we did throw it out a little bit of time. But I think uh, now with last year, we only did a third of our playbook, and now we can get more open or more comfortable getting out there. I think we can be more explosive. Uh, he's a take off the top receiver on the outside. Uh, Caleb uh, Alexander is a junior returning quarterback last year. Uh, that was uh, also all-purpose, all-region guy last year. Uh, dangerous with his arm, but even dangerous with his feet. So a lot of keys of that for a lot of defense was keyed on that. So he's been able to hurt him with triple A's from that point. Um, another one would be Will Johnson, uh, free safety for us, uh, six-foot receiver, uh, six-foot DB, excuse me. Also going to play receiver this year too. Uh, this uh, wise IQ guy in the back end who can run everything with a show um, from that point. So here, uh, then another one would be um, the other two would be uh, Nico Orlando, who was our backup. Nico, back, right? Yeah, Bryce yeah, last year. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, AP, yeah. I, I coached the APYFL, and his, his right. dad and, and and his older brother and my Luca. son played with that's or right. against each other. Yep. Yeah, so Luca's at CNU now. He's doing great there. Um, but uh, yep. Nico, he's a flash. I mean, he came on strong last year. Uh, at first, it was just a little off. He getting his groove, but about say midway through the season, he got in his groove. So it was great. You had Thunder and Lightning with him and Bryce. So now for him to get yeah. the main thing and touch the ball, I mean, he's looked great in fall camp so far. So I'm expecting big things for him. And then the other one be on our defensive side. Um, that was all region linebacker. It would be Langston White. Uh, 6'2", 225 linebacker, that can be versatile outside linebacker. Um, so looking for those guys to be the stronghold, but we have a lot of others that can uh, that are definitely going to contribute this year. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like you have, I mean, a good balance, but a lot of offensive weapons. Yeah. Uh, last year, defense were, I felt like defense was our whole group. I mean, last year, holding people under 13 points, uh, you know, forcing three to four turnovers a game, we had – seven pick sixes defense was pretty much that could erase things they put the string a hold on people and their offense would you know ride through from the point but now with the offensive weapons we have and still being the same spread team offense and having the guys in space and we know people are going to key in on nico seeing what he did last year so go ahead and stack that box and then we get the guys on space outside and let them do their thing and with caleb being in the system like he was last year and open that playbook more this year i think will be even more dangerous offensively than defensively this year Right, Coach. You've mentioned your your returning players. Is there are there any new new either transfers or freshmen or anybody get, or, or maybe somebody from JV that's going to be stepping yeah, up? Yeah, um, want to hear about? Yeah, there's a cute. Um, we had a guy um, last year um, that was on a JV, but he earned a spot to um, be able to go on the varsity roster once we made the playoffs. Um, be the Tyler Owens. Uh, he is a sophomore, um, this lightning speed. Uh, he's a slot receiver for us, and he's a safety for us. Uh, gain weight, I think he's up to 160 this year now, but lightning speed, he's going to be versatile for us. I mean, he showed it all year, 707, being in the weight room on time all year. He's dedicated to the thing. Uh, last year, his brother was a senior for us and played tackle, so it's like you see apples and oranges. His brother was a six-foot-something, 300-pound kid, and he's – over here, skinny mini, but he get the ball in his hand. He's tough as nails. So he's showing. I'm excited to see what he can do this year. Our first scrimmage we had against Gainesville, um, 
he got a couple of passes from that point, but they started keying on him because they saw the burst. He can take a five yard drag and take it 80 yards, you know, real fast on you. Um, and then another contributor for us uh, would be on the um, uh, deep inside uh, would be Maddox uh, Turley. He was also a slot guy behind. We had Jackson last year, but he's another guy with speed that we have on our side. Um, he was mostly a slot guy, but he can play running back. He plays safety. So he's a multi-purpose guy. So we just got a lot of, I think athleticism is going to be our big thing this year. We just got many guys that can get in space and make you miss. And then that's going to make it long for uh, teams on the other side of the ball. Coach, what kind of offense okay. you guys run? I haven't been able to see you on film or anything. I'm going to come see you though. Or does an electric game? <laughs> I want to go check it out. Uh, but what, what kind of offense are you running? Uh, we're going to be a spread uh, RPO kind of team, uh, gap scheme running off front. So uh, we'll do a lot of motions, uh, do a lot of stuff. We're, we're still going to be a run heavy team, but we we have the personnel now where we can fling that ball outside and put our guys in space and, you know, see if your DB is going to tackle or not. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. How are your special teams? Uh, special teams are good. I think we're even stronger, especially kicking. Um, I was grateful enough to have a, two guys that are from um, play soccer here. Uh, they played okay. football last year, and then they kind of made the switch being in the football program last year and seeing everything. They are they were big soccer players, and now they're like, oh, I kind of like this football thing a little more. I get to hit people. <laughs> I still get to right. run. That's nothing to me, but I get to hit people now. I mean, so I think uh, the biggest asset is going to be uh, Wyatt Vanderhaar. He's a soccer player, but he's going to be a kicker for us, but he also plays linebacker and wide receiver for us. Um, Big foot kid. I mean, this you don't see a lot of touchbacks, which saves you know that breath running yeah. down kickoff. It gets an end zone. Hey, that saves you time, and you make sure the offense starts at a twenty. Uh, another one that plays soccer um, is going to be Blake Fletcher. Uh, he was here last year. He was a JV running back kid, and he's uh, I mean, he's just built for football. You see him on soccer field, you'd be like, hey, that kid's a football. He came out. <laughs> right. just, I mean, he just the, his thighs, thick thighs. Thick waist kid can fling it. So I'm sorry to see him and Nico in the backfield rotating because I mean it's pound for pound with those two coming back. So um, but the special teams wise, I think we'll be able to do that. And then just having, you know, Owens and Maddox um, being able to return kicks and even, you know, give Nico a chance back there. Cause I know he's always in my ear whispering on the sideline, just put me back there one time, coach. <laughs> you know, running backs want the ball. That's yep. what they're gonna do. So <laughs> yep. Right. Yep. So I think that's another asset this year, though, you know, stop, prevent people from having good field cover, um, position and at the same time stopping people, you know, from uh, attacking us and just taking out another play to score points for us on the other side. Right. Yep. That's good. Good stuff. Yeah, Coach, I was looking at your schedule. So you're playing, you know, a lot of the, um, the 3A teams kind of out west, which is no longer the country, you know, it's become yeah. – Warren County, um, Liberty that's out in Bealton and, um, you know, some of those schools um, who have produced some unbelievable talent. Um, talk to us about, you know, going through your schedule, progressing and getting better and maybe highlighting what you think are the key tests to get you ready to return to the playoffs. Uh, yeah, a big thing for us is uh, we're front loaded with the uh, 4A teams. Um, 4A team, with, that's right. Yeah, 4A teams, you know, with the Liberties and Fauquier and Kettle Run and James Wood, uh, which, is, like you said, the previous history from itself. I mean, Liberty, you think of Wyatt Teller off the break. I mean, it's, yeah. it's Wyatt Teller. Uh, Fauquier, there's a program over there, a coach over there has been growing the things well, so they always contest the guys. They're not afraid to hit anybody. Uh, kettle runs, kettle run. You know, that's we're starting to establish as a new, you know, rivalry between us two, which is team being that's the closest where we get. Uh, like I told, you know, people before, I mean, our schedule is like a D3 college team. We travel. I mean, the closest was from that <laughs> spark. But everything else, we're on the road. And like you said, um, yeah. going there at James Wood, um, they had electric receiver last year, but they're a well-coached team over there uh, on that side. So that's a little hike out there. And then, then you get to the threes, you get your Meridians, you get your uh, Skyline, who's always well coached, uh, Warren County. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, who else am I forgetting at that point? We even have a 5A slipped in there. We got Riverside, uh, yeah. who were able to get that point. Oh, so, yeah. So the biggest thing for us is, uh, like many teams here, um, we try to get a schedule. Hopefully, you know, next cycle, I'm working to get a little more. I want the better competition you play, you know, then you can get to that playoff team and, 
hey, we faced a, a 5A and 4As. You know, the better competition you play, the better your team will go. So, you know, you can see yourself. Because right now, you know, the past three weeks, we've just been against each other. We just got against last week, you know, when the Gainesville team, that's uh, Coach Bruin over there has great kids. I mean, tons of kids over there. In a couple of years, that team's going to be growing because they have the talent. They got that's the what size. That's what everybody says. Oh, they yeah. Got, they they got the size. They so have the size. They yeah. got the size. So they're, they're, they should be good. They keep going from that point over there. But the way we can just compete against those teams is going to make us even better. So when it gets to strictly 3A, hey, we faced the teams athletic and bigger before, and we did well against them. So this makes it better. So just looking to do that and just keep on exposing this program and here and just exposing these kids to better competition and better ourselves. That's good, Coach. Let me ask you: Do, do you have any assistant coaches that you want to uh, let us know about? Um, but when you when you when you came to the program, um, did you bring your whole a whole new staff? Did you leave some people, or some people already there? Or, and and t t tell us about that. Yeah. So um, when I was first hired, I was a, a Patriot. I was actually a DBs coach over at Patriot when before I got hired at Brunsville. Um, I brought over um, two coaches before. Well, that I was at Patriot with and uh, came over here before. It was uh, Obi Woods. He was my offensive coordinator, but he recently, oh, this yeah. offseason, got the uh, uh, head coaching job at Virginia Academy, a new private yeah. school starting up, mm -hmm. and he's got things going over there. So uh, he's going to, he started his new thing next year. But I kept on, I have uh, Jesse Jackson, who was my defensive coordinator last year, but he's going to move over to the offensive side and uh, leave me as defensive coordinator this year so he's action but uh everything everybody else pretty much that was there before uh kept the staff i got a lot of guys that even went to brentsville that worked before there um this is my second time at brentsville it's the first time as head coach five years ago i was there before um so okay. a lot of those guys were still there before that i are familiar with and you know know how my coaching style is and with the program and it's been well you know going from that and just seeing them and catching on what my philosophy is and bringing new things to them. So I think that really helped us last year and then everybody kept on. So. Right. Well, who was the head coach five years ago? Was that um, not Ryan? Ryan Smith. Yes. Ryan Smith. Was. Ryan Smith. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so you, you, you were on that staff and that, and that, I mean, that, that, that was a big part of the turnaround. To yeah. me, I think, from what I can remember, because when I first moved to Prince William County, Brinsfield, not just because they were small, they just weren't, winning you know yeah. as much and I, I saw what Ryan did um and I was like okay because I knew my wife was at Woodbridge um uh, mm -hmm. for years before coming over to Colgan and so I knew a lot of the coaches at Woodbridge and and man but but he got that thing and you I'm sorry you guys got that thing going man yeah I mean the, Ryan was thankful for calling me out because during that time before when Ryan first got the job the first year he gave me a call but I was still at uh Garfield uh, at that time mm -hmm. so then uh the year following i was like hey yeah i'll come with you um just finding out more about it especially at garfield at the time i had uh the great uh mike madison there and he told me about it he was a teacher there he coached there before so went out there um you know during that time is they had good players and just couldn't put it together so during that time you know they had a streak of losses and then for that second year to come in and get that first win and against mass park and uh, like I told Kurt before, it was two and eight that first year, then build it up to seven and five. And then at that time, it was Ryan, his last year there was the best record at 10 and three. That's uh, right. So, I mean, this, it was the talent was there, just the scheme, just to get it right and see it there. And, um, you know, it was found it great. And then took a period where Ryan left and then I left and then just come back now. I just felt like the right situation because you have the community and I just felt this is where it's at. And you got the kids here that just need the right thing to placement. And from that point on, even, you know, when uh, the coach before me, uh, Joe Mole next to him, they still had success during that time. So, yeah. Who, who was the athletic director at, at, at Brentsville? Uh, athletic director is Mr. South Cameron. So uh, he okay. was. Uh, yeah. Yeah, big big wrestler. You need to read before. Uh, so, but uh, he's been great. He hired, awesome. he hired you. He hired, he hired me. Hired you. Yeah, he actually came on um, my second. The first time I was at Brentsville, the second year I was there. That's when he was appointed AD. Right, great hire. That was clearly a great hire. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, not bad. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Coach, how how far into the playoffs did you go? I know you lost to Phoebus down in Hampton. Was that a second round? No, that was um, semis. That was uh, third round. That was a third round. Yeah, was that to go to state? 
Yeah, yeah, next, was, yeah, next game okay. right before. Yeah, all so. right. So y'all that was the Saturday final. after Thanksgiving. You know, I think it's yeah, so yeah, we we're final okay. four. We we're final four. So yeah, okay. So you were almost there, and uh, you know it's the usual suspects again. Phoebus is ranked number one in the state. Uh, Liberty Christian is two, right? In preseason poll, and then you you know there's some great teams. Lake Taylor Rusty went down to three from four, and and. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you got Christiansburg, Lord Botetot, uh, Brentsville, you know, some really good teams. Um, my question to you is, um, can your team win the state championship this year? Definitely. Uh, we got everything. We got the experience, like you said. And a big thing when I first came, I mean, little parents looked at me, you know, cross-eyed, but I told them, you know, schedule starts. They asked me, you know, what's the schedule? Right. And schedule starts from this date. And schedule ends football doesn't end until December 15th I expect us to be on campus at Liberty on that day that yeah. Saturday whatever <laughs> it is like football doesn't end so get your vacations all in May June whatever but July 28th was the rock and roll time you're not here you left out you know yeah. and expectations like Thanksgiving you know we do like last year we do a practice Thanksgiving morning and, you know, December 15th is when football ends. So you want to play on vacations with your family, 16, 17, yeah. 18, 19, whatever, <laughs> Christmas, you full for do what you got to do. But yeah, from do. that point, beginning of two days to December 15th is all football and we're locked in. So I definitely feel we can be there. We just got to make sure we do what we do on our part, game to game, week to week, and continue to grow. We should be there and just get to now we've been in that situation now. Now we know what to expect whether it's going there or they'll come in here, whichever way I expect us to be there. Hey, coach, I love that quick, coach. A, a quick sidebar. Um, I wanted to ask you, we've got two new staffs at the, uh, the two big in-state power five schools, UVA and Virginia tech. And yeah. I know that I believe coach Quinn at uh, Virginia tech is your recruiter. Who, yeah. Who's your recruiter at UVA? UVA would be a uh, Clint Sinton, which is, okay, uh, yeah, he's, yeah, oh, he's yeah. Prince Prince Prince. so let me ask you, how do you feel? And we'll go with tech first and UVA. Um, because we've got um, a lot of friends on both sides. I'm me being a Hokie, Rusty's brother uh, being a Hokie. But how do you feel? Do you do you see a change with both schools? I definitely see it. This is an impression. I mean, uh, it's pretty much for them. It was eye shock for a lot of people to see the amount of kids that came to Brentsville this off season. This coaches and you, they're used to a lot of threes and everything for the but to see the twos and the ones come in yeah. from that point. But the, for both of these programs specifically to come out. Uh, Quinn showing up, school day, talking, spending time. You know, we got on the board together. Quinn's been great for tech, showing the philosophy. And then, uh, you know, kids, a lot of our kids getting invited down there to camps, going down there, be able to speak to Pry and the staff and to see the facilities and to be there. It's just a whole new experience. And they're really attacking Northern Virginia, the DMV. They see the talent. Just got to get the buy-in um, for kids to get down there to commit. And then on the UVA side, I mean, Clint is – I'm kind of biased because we both went to Garfield together and we played for, with each other. So oh, uh, Clint's my, okay. yeah, Clint was, Clint's my guy. So to see that, but the same thing, you know, with them coming in with coach and then this our same thing, our guys coming down, they're both, they're both reaching hard in the state. Now is this everybody in the, you know, Northern Virginia, even in Richmond, seven by seven, we want to see consistency though. Don't just come in, knock on my door once, try to sell me something that I don't hear from you anymore. Is consistency that we want to see now. And I think so far they've done well. I mean, just reaching out to kids on both sides, inviting them and being able to, you know, show the stuff in their program and actually approving it. And we just want to see the build up on that. So the more as kids now, the more you see it, social media has to be a big presence and you're recruiting it too. Yeah. So I think the more they see it, I think, you know, you know, especially what you do this year will show people a lot. And a lot of kids want to stay in state. You want to defend where you're from. It's all yeah. about remembering where you're from. That's where everybody says now. I'm, I'm, my community, my my neighborhood, my school, whatever, myself, they want to stay in state, but they're not going to go to somewhere where they know it's not going to be the promise that you told my kid at the dinner room table. Yeah. So that's the big thing. So we'll see. Right. Coach, you already led into what my, our, my final question was going to be, and that is, how well, how did you get your so you I, you just told us you went golfer tell us you know, are you were you born and raised in Prince William County you played youth football what, 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 play, you played at golfer tell me about your story no the thing with me uh, my mom was terrified of football so she wouldn't let me do anything till I was seven uh, actually my first love sport was baseball 
And yeah. um, so we did that um, between uh, Richmond, staying my grandparents in from that point, and then um, being in Maryland. And then we came down here my eighth grade year. Yeah, eighth grade year. So um, during that time, implemented. Um, then it was uh, the first coach who I still keep in contact with today, Tony Labazetta. I was at uh, Lake Ridge Middle School for probably like a, half a semester. And okay. I was supposed to go to Woodbridge. So everybody laughs at the story. I'm supposed to go to Woodbridge. I'm thinking of Woodbridge. He calls up, calls school, finds out about me. No, nah, you're on the borderline here of uh, Smoketown Road. So back then, <laughs> right, Smoketown, right. if you was on the other side near the west that, end of Smoketown, you went to Garfield. That's right. So I ended up going to Garfield from that point, and then that was it. Tony Lavazella took me on his wing, and we just built it up. You know, like Clint was there. Uh, Rashid Cortez, who's the head coach of Osborne, I played with him. Uh, Darren Garrigan, who's uh, Garrigan, who's the DB coach at, um, I believe he's at Texas State right now. Um, tons of us are going into coaching from that point, and then just going back and forth bottles to playing against everybody. So, you know, playing the Hiltons, and then my brother uh, Keenan, that was at Potomac. The battles we had um, playing Coach O at Hilton, you know, and then mm -hmm. Jeff this year. So that's when games, you know, Rusty, as you know, that was. No, oh, yeah, fits. it was. Oh it was, my gosh, it yeah. was people parking on the street. Yes, and that's what no, we're trying yeah. to get fo football back to in this area. You know, it's no more people trying to go to the mall. It's like, hey, Friday nights, I want to go see my school. Oh, you know, you know, Brentsville's playing this, or Freedom's playing Garfield, or Free Garfield Woodbridge, the rivals. So I think it's starting to get back into that intensity what, of what it was. What year did you graduate from Garfield? I graduated in '02. And after that, then I went to Shepherd College. It was Shepherd College at the time, Shepherd University now. Oh, okay. Did, did you play any sports at Shepherd? Did you play? I played football. I went to football for scholarship too. Oh, good football. Oh, cool. okay. Very good football. Very good. No, yeah, we, yeah, my uh, son is, would love to go there. He's been there taking the uh, and stuff. So. Coach McCook was the O line coach when I went, and Klein, who's the yeah. defensive coordinator, he, I played with Klein. So Klein is oh, the defensive okay. I played with Klein there. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I really like like that school. Okay, yeah. That's so O right. two, that was when we moved out here. Uh, yep. Before we were, we moved here in O two, we were in Alexandria. But um, I'm, I'm good friends with with Coach Mike Feldman. He, he he's from uh, Newport News, and so okay. he still he was a, he and my mom were PE teachers together, and he coached at okay. Warwick when I I was in a, playing football at Bethel, and then he okay. get, came up here to coach at Osborne Park. He coached football there a couple of years and then, and then he went just straight track. But I say that to say, I was always coming down to Prince William County games. And then I'll tell you what, man, and this is what people do down in Hampton. When my wife and I decided to build a house down here, I was like, where are we zoned? <laughs> and we were, we we're right over off Holy Road. And at the time, if you were on one side, you went to OP. If you're on this side, you went to Hilton. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going, I want my kids going to Hilton. So for years, and, and look, we grew up in Hampton. I played for Bethel, played against, yeah. I mean, so football, is like, that's a big deal. Like, okay, I, I wanted to know. And so I was bringing my kids since they were little kids. We go in the Hilton game. And like you said, back in that day, man, let me tell you something. It was just like down in Hampton. I mean, those Hilton games were packed. I remember, this is a little after you, but I remember when uh, Percy Harvin, came up there man yep. and and I, I mean you know I mean just it, it was it reminded me of home and, and then yep. I also know I mean my wife started at Woodbridge in 03 but that Woodfield Garfield rivalry is like the Hampton Bethel you know I, I still struggle wearing green to this day <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like only reason I wear that only thing red is because of AP Wildfield and my wife went to Maryland but okay. Hampton Crabbers man I don't my, okay first of all I'm an alpha so I don't like red because cappers so then <laughs> this is a whole bunch of stuff so I can feel you on that color my wife got a red car I don't even like to drive <laughs> yeah see, I hear stuck. you once it gets to you stuck in you uh, before yeah. we close I just did I want to ask you one thing um you know I know it's a close-knit county uh, a close-knit community and county how do you feel about you know division six down there is very very good I mean there's Couple teams, uh, Rusty's picking Patriot to come out of that region. Um, how do you feel about the Region Six? Uh, and then um, we'll let you start with Region Six and then Region Five up here in Northern Virginia. Oh, uh, this is going. I mean, even being with Patriot before, I mean, this is the gift and the curse of that group because I, 
I don't want to be biased, but it's like it's made up for Fairfax. You know, it's oh, bro. The, all the Prince William schools in there, and then you have Forge, and it's a bunch of good teams, and plus they got to play each other all the time. So it's like yeah. beating each other up just to fight to scratch the top. You get more excitement in the regular season game than this uh, region alone. Uh, right. But just over six, I mean, you have Patriot, who uh, fans great over there, and they're locked and loaded this year with what they have with that old line and the stuff. So they're going good. Then Battlefield that went that far last year and the talent they have over there and Coach Hatfield himself, his first year coming in. Uh, me and Hatfield had battles when I was at first at Brentsville and he was at Eastern View too. So I know what he can do as a coach. Um, you have a, I mean, then you got Overton over there with the dogs over there and Freedom. They're always going to show up some way, somehow. And then you have Forge or Brown, you know, I, Talk to Brown still. I mean, he's going to be locked and loaded yeah. over there too. So, um, as as is hard just getting out that region alone, and yeah. then after yeah. that, then you got to turn, you know, and then you got the big dogs down there that prove year after year, Oscar Smith. Yeah. So, um, it's going to be exciting. That's what I look for too. I'm not, I'm into mine, you know, at three. And I keep up with four and stuff like that, but I always keep up with the fives and six to see where that, especially you know, where where the where the redheaded stepchild of Prince William County. But I still see the guys around us. So, yeah, I, I'll tell you, tell, tell you this, Coach. It, 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 so, uh, all these Division Six uh, programs in the county, but I tell you, that's just a number because football it programs, you, you know, it does not mean like we, Kirk and I firmly believe like the best, the strongest division. Talking about is Division Five. Top you to know, bottom. And I top know to top to bottom, top to bottom. Oh, and Division Three, if, if you run your program right, it doesn't matter what the number is. I can tell you right now, Brentsville being a three is better than 70% Many of the teams. Many <laughs> some of the teams in this county. I mean, mm -hmm. you you got the coaching, you develop the talent. Uh, it's you got community uh, uh spirit and so that all goes a long way man i, I go to some division six games and there's nobody in the stands you know yeah. or or the, the, i just see there's a lack of talent and it, and it could be for a number of reasons it could be coaching but it could also be the other interest but when I, I i know this if if you're winning and it's a it's a great environment and people get it uh the people will come out and and doesn't matter again the division because Phoebus is in a conference with mostly division five and they'll play six. And, and that, I think you guys, it doesn't matter that you're three, you're one of the top teams in Prince William County, period. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I just wanted to be known. That's what the goal of my program to get it building. So that we have that respect within ourselves too. It's not only in our County, but it's overall in our thing, but it's, that's what I want to get to growing our player. I want to play the fourth. I want to play five. So I want to play the six, especially in our County. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, I would love oh, yeah. a five minute bus drive <laughs> right now. We have <laughs> averaging 35 to an hour to go yeah. play a team. So I would love to get this. Up. So I would love to see you walk. I, I, when my son was at Benton, I was on the staff there and we, for, we went undefeated. We had those really down years, but, but I, I, I say before, you know, so again, my son's at Colgan, but he thought he was going to be a bulldog until they opened that school. But yeah. when they opened that school, they also took kids from Brentsville, you know, in different places. I would love to see an annual Brentsville Colgan game. I mean, they 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 split a lot of the same neighborhoods, you know, yeah. and that to me would be great. Now, I think if they played that the last five years, Brentsville would have been five and zero. Oh, but I think it's a new day, folks. You got newer coaches, and and I I think if you guys could somehow get that in your, on on the schedule, that could be that would be a great rivalry game. Yeah, I, I, I mean, with Reggie over there, I love Reggie's death. I know he's going to do great things over at Colgate. So, I'm, you know, I'll hopefully get to talk some of him. I almost had a, a sub-varsity game last year with the over 10, but stuff didn't work out uh, from that end schedule-wise to get that done. So I reach out to his coaches, and a lot of them responded. You know, they, they definitely would give us an opportunity to play, whether I don't, I don't care if it's a scrimmage, parking lot, you know, yeah. mad, whatever. I just want to just want to get it so that way it helps grow my team. So then when we get to those situations, we've been battle tested and then it's like, hey, now we know what we're going to do. We played against the highs of the highs and we keep growing ourselves and go from there. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right, coach. Well, we appreciate you coming on again if uh you're still watching. Um episode 95 we did uh with Jay Golson. And uh, what's Justin's last name, um, Rusty? Um, oh, Richards. Uh, Richards. 
Yeah. yeah. So we did a Prince oh. William County overview. Prince, it's, it's Prince William Sports and Entertainment. Yep. Yeah. Yes. So we did a Prince William overview and uh, we talked about the programs quite a bit. Jay made some um, predictions and, you know, we asked everybody again to subscribe to us. And um, how many scrimmages? You got what, one left or? Yeah. Actually, one tomorrow one. we uh, go to uh, Loudoun Valley and scrimmage okay. them. Okay. So that's oh. a good test for this tough group. They got some big yeah. boys. There. Yeah, they got some farm oh, boys yeah. there. Yeah. So, uh, yep. Coach Bishop gets them right, so I think that'll be a good test for us before uh, we get straight and uh, head off to a uh, home game against uh, Liberty, game one. That's yeah. It. All right, Coach. Good. good stuff. Hey, Coach, I um before we close out, the last thing I say, and we've mentioned this to the other coaches, we're having a little contest, all right? We are interviewing maybe 15 to 20 coaches from all over the state. We want to see what coach can get the most views. Now, we we said this to the very first coach we interviewed from Low C. Bird down in uh, Chesterfield County, and he took off. Like, he's already, I think, got over 400 views. But we mentioned this to, to Daryl Overton, and he did – he has delivered – I mean, I think he made it maybe made told people they'd have to do push-ups if they didn't, <laughs> didn't watch it. So I mean, in one day he's got uh what he's got, Curl, over 300 views in, in, in 24 hours. So we're just gonna put it out there. If you, you know, I know you guys are focused on football, but if your fan base can help you guys out by watching, commenting, and if they can subscribe to the show, that would be great. We just wanna to see now my, my high school Bethel, we interviewed our new coach David Porter, and he was like, Yeah, 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 but man, like they in fourth place. He gotta pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> LC well, Bird and um Freedom Wood Bridge and then Stone Bridge just dropped tonight. They they've got a rabbit. They remind me of um, the Hampton Roads teams, but uh yeah, feel free to spread oh, that out. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I love Coach Taylor, what he's done at LC Bird and stuff like, especially his Virginia Union days from that point. And Dio's my man, hundred grand from that point. Um, and then Mickey at Stonebridge, he definitely helped me out my first year. But there's one thing about this Princefield community, and I know Jay's talked about it before. You don't want to do a contest against us because we go, right. we go hard. All right, you're on then. We go hard. So, so let me let me know when you guys post it out, and I'll. I'll tag you guys in that tweet too, and I just want okay. you to watch that. Watch the numbers for thirty minutes, and then hey, see what okay. fans get a hold. Oh, yeah. And, and again, we, you know, one of the things we talk about is this is on record, so you got to watch what you say. Right. Hey, <laughs> with, the, with with my community and the jungle and the way these fans are. Oh no, I'm prefacing what I'm about to say. So oh, go ahead. But, no, but we talked about it. I mean, these forums where you individually attack a kid. Okay, that's someone's son. You know. And this this kid has worked hard, this things, and saying someone sucks or this, that, that, none of that. But I am going on record as saying Phoebus is going to repeat, and I'm doing that on purpose. I'm doing that so your kids can look yeah, at me, bullshit. and if you guys beat Phoebus, can say, we shut you up. All right? Coach, so, there you Coach, go. There you this is what you need to do. Go ahead on, print out a face, Kirk's face, and put it on a bulletin board, or on a dartboard. All right, and every day I <laughs> try to get him right the nose. All right, coach, I, 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 look, it's one of those things. I, I'm, 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 I've been here longer than I lived in Hampton. So yeah, if you guys too, meet yeah. Phoebus again, if you meet Phoebus, you know I'm usually always, you know, Hampton seven five seven. But you know, I, I, I'll, I'll be supporting you. I'm, I'm gonna go by. If we don't get Coach Blunt on, I'm, I'm pulling for you, and I think you're gonna win it all. Hey, right, respect Coach Blunt. Coach Blunt's coming on, on, Rusty. Hey, I, 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 hey, he Co Coach Blunt don't want that Prince William smoke. I'm saying it right now, dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's fine. Hey, just make sure uh, Kirk and Rusty, you there December fifteenth. So after it's done, the oh, deed yeah. is done. All right, all right, bring, all right. we'll bring you okay. down. Kamari, Kamari Gray's little brother is better than him. We got hey. the best. We got one of the best three safeties in the country. Kamari, I, I won't hey. be able to. Bass is a dude. I give him that. Bass yeah, is yeah. a dude. Oh, yeah. Eddie, his He's dad is a big show. guy. But you know, that'll be a good team. That'll be a good matchup because y'all are going to be motivated. And let's face it, man. You got to be good. You got to be lucky. And, and injuries have to stay there. But anybody can beat anybody. Exactly. Anybody can beat any, anybody. So your kids can win it. Absolutely. 100%. Yes, we're, in. we're in it all the way. All right. 
No doubt. Man, you've been great, Coach. I appreciate yeah. you joining us, man. No problem. And hope you were, you know, I, you, like you're a pro, bro. You, you're relaxed and you, you get it. And sure. I love, I love, I love what you're doing out there. Uh, I won't be able to be there on December 15th because Kogan will be down at ODU uh, playing against Smith in the state championship. Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing, dog? No, that's, you hey, you, you can take a ride for ODU over Liberty. You'll be all right. We'll see you. We'll, we'll, we'll vouch you to gas. That's what we did last year. So, yeah, see. So, so Bethel, Beth, Division Five, Bethel will be playing Mari, okay. and Division Six will be Kogan against Smith. Okay. There we go. All right. <laughs> Kirk, you oh, with no, that right. too? Bethel, Bethel can't play Mari because we're going to beat them in the semis. Bethel's going to be playing Stonebridge. Yeah, exactly. and we're going to beat them. That's right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, we'll, we'll, you so, but I, I can, I can watch, I can watch you on my phone. That's fine. Um, you know, I watched I watched your game last year from Norfolk. Okay. You know. Oh no, no, that was y'all were the week before. So I know I, I watched that game wherever I was. Where were we in the semis? We were uh, at the Highland Spring game, right? Stonebridge. We were at Stonebridge. Okay, yeah, so you're yeah, at Stonebridge. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 All right, coach. Thanks again, man. I know. Really appreciate you guys. Time. Love what you guys do. Does Thank great you. for the programs and gets attention to them. So you guys keep rolling. Love what you guys do. So. Yeah, we appreciate Thanks, it, man. man. It's what it's all about. This is fun, and it's all about the kids and helping them. All right? Absolutely. Yep. All right, appreciate you guys. All right, man. God hey, bless. this has been Coach Lauren White of Brinsfield with Kirkenberg. We are out.